Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Catholic Citizen episode 13. Today I'm talking about China, censorship, and why I might end up in jail here pretty soon. Can't wait to talk to you in just a minute. Well, friends, I love you, and I just want to give you a big hug. Thanks so much for joining us today on The Catholic Citizen. Since I can't hug you, I'll do my best to use my sultry voice to hug you. Never mind, that just sounds weird. Let's pay the bills. All right, so first off, go to awakencatholic.org slash donate. We need your help. Um, these ties that I wear that I've had for seven years now, they're not cheap. Um, so I'd like to buy some new ties. So send us your donation at awakencatholic.org slash donate. Just kidding. I don't get paid for this. Uh, it's more about keeping these lights on. Secondly, there is a really new Catholic app, uh, Awaken Catholic app. So please go to your Google Play Store and download the Awaken Catholic app. And you can talk to me. You can see this show live stream. You don't have to wait until all the mistakes I made are edited out. So please download the app today. Lastly, and I'm going to get this right, it's Casa Bea Cleaning. This is the place you need to go to clean your home or residence or a commercial place, um, especially during this time of COVID-19. You need a, a clean place to live. So if you want someone who's really good at their job, but also just a really good person, really good people, Casabea Cleaning are the people that you want to go to. So please check them out. Patron them uh, because they're helping us out here at Awaken Catholic. All right. Thanks so much, guys. Let's get to the show. There's so much to cover and I don't want to run over. So I want to keep your attention. So stay with me. Number one, uh, you may have heard of her. Uh, I never heard, did, but her name is Amanda Ensing. She landed a high profile collaboration with the French beauty brand Sephora. Also, nothing I know anything about. It has to do with makeup and so on and so forth. Anyway, she her YouTube subscriber viewership, much larger than mine. I don't know why, but it is. But she had 1.4 million subscribers to her YouTube channel. And she told you how to put on makeup and all these things like that. So she signed this contract with Sephora. Boom, things are going good. It's mutually beneficial. She's with this big makeup brand, so on and so forth. And then somebody sends a Twitter message and says, did you know who this young woman is? She's a Christian and she's a Trump supporter. How dare you have her on your brand, marketing your brand? What happens next? She's canceled because she's a Christian, because she's a Trump supporter. In fact, the tweet that was sent to Sephora said that she's a supporter of the dangerous MAGA group, meaning Make America Great Again group. Now, Again, I'm not telling you to be Republican. I'm not telling you to support President Trump. I'm not telling you to be a part of the MAGA movement. But I'm telling you, it's absolutely ridiculous when private people are being canceled simply because of their personal political views. But that's exactly what happened to Amanda Ensing. Who's next? What's going to happen? Well, it's happening right now in Congress. Marjorie Greene. Now, Representative uh, Marjorie Green, Republican from Georgia, she said some wacky things. And quite frankly, I'm okay if they don't allow her on some committees there in Congress because she said things like, um, well, really dangerous things, suggesting that mass school shootings were staged, a plane didn't really hit the Pentagon during 9 11. Uh, she also uh, used threatening, terrible words, talking about, you know, a bullet to the head of Nancy Pelosi would be a quick way to remove her from office, so on and so forth. And she talked about space lasers starting the California wildfire. Fires. All this was before she was elected to office. Now, nutty stuff. I don't know how she ever even got elected. And I don't want that type of person holding, um, you know, positions on committees and so on and so forth. But here's a dangerous precedent that's being set when you start removing people from what they've said. I mean, what about Representative Ihan Omar from Minnesota? I mean, all the anti-Semitic comments that she's made while being in office. So the Democrats want to take off the Republican people for saying crazy things, but what about their own uh, congressmen? So that's just one thing to consider in the midst of that. Again, I'm okay if you remove all the people who are saying nutty things. It doesn't matter what party they're in. Uh, but then, you know, the, the issue here, too, is when you look at the news media and what they cover and what they focus on, Marjorie Greene, and rightly so, has been front page news and CNN, Fox News, all those things, like demonstrating, look, this is just how crazy the Republican Party is, Okay. But you have these other stories that kind of sneak under the radar there a little bit, and they're not front page news for the like three, four, five days at a time. How about Jelena Porter, deputy spokesperson for the U.S. Department, uh, U.S. State Department under President Biden? She said uh, that the largest national security threat to the United States of America are police officers, aka, this is what she tweeted, the Blue Klux Klan. 
So again, this is someone who's the deputy spokesperson for the U.S. State Department saying that the greatest threat to the United States of America is not China, it's not Russia, it's not nuclear weapons. It's our very own police officers. Now, if there's one thing that's going to make me more upset than anything is you start going after our police officers. You start going after our firefighters, our first responders, those people who keep us safe. And this is the deputy spokesperson for the U.S. State Department. Does it make news all over CNN or MSNBC? No, you barely hear anything about it. So, yes, please hold Marjorie Greene's feet to the fire, but do that as well for the Democratic nominees in the U.S. State Department or Democratic congressmen as well. All right, censorship. Let's continue on that. The Daily Wire is reporting that the, a Christian organization was suspended recently from its Twitter account last week for saying that Dr. Rachel Levine, that we've uh, covered on this show, the Assistant Secretary for the Health at the Department of Health and Human Services, is a biological male. So their Twitter account was suspended because they said that Dr. Rachel Levine was a biological male. So... First of all, that's actually the truth. Um, but this is what they actually wrote on their tweet, uh, their Twitter account, January 19th. On Tuesday, President-elect Joe Biden announced that he had chosen Dr. Rachel Levine to serve as Assistant Secretary for Health at the Department of HHS. Dr. Levine is a transgender woman. That is a man who believes he is a woman. That is exactly the actual definition and their Twitter account suspended. So honestly, I'm not sure how much longer my show's going to be on the air because I also happen to believe in science and biology, and I also happen to believe that biology is not bigotry. Uh, but that's where we're at as a country. And all of this, uh, my fourth story, it's about controlling the language and the narrative that you see from the progressive left when it comes to what's going on in our country right now. Um, so an example of this, for example, a new eyebrowsing raising report suggests that the White House communications team had attempted to screen questions for press secretary Jen Paskey in advance of daily briefings. So basically she went, the, the press secretary now for President Biden went to the press and said, hey, can you, can you give me the questions before I actually go out there? Uh, that might help me out a little bit. So imagine if the, if the Trump press secretary did this, Kaylee McKinney. If, imagine she went out there and said, hey, can you guys give me the questions? Wouldn't the liberal news media say, hey, you're trying to control the narrative. How dare you as the White House press secretary do that? But Jen goes out there and says, hey, give me your questions a little bit so I can prepare beforehand. I mean, it's like a big test, right? You get the questions beforehand, you're ready to go. You can control the narrative. And that's exactly what the left wants to do. They don't want to report on some of these stories, what Jelena Porter said and others, because that hurts and goes against the narrative. Um, and this ties into something more big, which is taking place. And I can't believe, you won't believe when I say that this is actually taking place. But this is out of the New York Times, okay? So this isn't some far right-wing conspiracy website, but this is the New York Times is reporting. Kevin Roos from the New York Times suggests that experts I spoke with, he says, uh, recommended that the Biden administration put together a cross-agency task force to tackle disinformation and domestic extremism, which would be led by something like a reality czar. So there are people on the left, and these people are like from Stanford. They're from some major universities across the country. They're coming out now suggesting to the Biden administration, maybe getting some of the temperature of the country right now, that maybe we need a reality czar in our government who can tell us, we simple folk, what is true and what is false. Is that what we need? Do we need the government telling us what is true and what is false? Do you trust the government, even if you're on the left, okay? Even if you're, you support Joe Biden and everything of that nature, do you want there to be a reality czar in our country who's going to come out and tell us what is true and what is not true? I mean, I feel like we're living in 1984. I mean, it's just, it's, it's unbelievable. Or well in 1984, or it's a brave new world. All right, let's get to some policy real quick before I, this is going to be a quick show. This is great. I'm, I'm getting right through this. All right. Policy. Pope Francis has been very clear that to be a Christian, to be a Catholic, um, taking care of the environment is not an optional experience. We have been given this tremendous gift of our common home, of the planet upon which we live. And I am all for taking care of this planet, and we need to do just that. Now, 
good Catholics, though, can have good, solid, strong disagreements about what are good, prudent steps to take to do just that. How do we balance, you know, the need for jobs and the need for people to take care of their families while also moving towards maybe energies and alternative energies that might be good for the long-term health of the country? Now, there might be some questions that need to be raised about solar panels, for example, and disposal of those solar panels and so on and so forth. But, you know, everyone's applauding, for example, President Joe Biden for jumping back into the Paris Climate Agreement. Now, this is another area where it's like, well, well, wait a minute. It just doesn't mean because he jumped back in that this is the best thing moving forward for the world. For example, the Paris Climate Agreement gives China and India, which are the two largest polluters in the entire world, it gives them a pass for 10 years on those countries living up to the standards put forth in the agreement. So everybody else is going to live up to the standards in the agreement. But the two countries that are actually the worst polluters in the entire world, they get a pass for 10 years. Well, you can catch up when you can. Okay, is it going to be extended at some point? I mean, is that really the best for the world just because the United States wasn't a part of that? And here's maybe a good reason why the United States should not be a part of it. The United States is obligated to pay U.S. tax dollars to other countries in order to help them eventually live up to the clean air standards that the U.S. has already accomplished. So the United States has already accomplished some of these clean air standards that are set forth in the Paris Climate Agreement. And we're going to pay other countries to make sure that their countries uh, live up to these standards to the tune of billions of dollars. Do, should our taxpayer dollars, with all the crises that we have going on right now, should it go to other countries to pay for their catching up with the Paris Climate Accord? You know, I'm okay with our money sometimes going overseas to help, especially in humanitarian efforts in some of these countries which really need humanitarian aid. But I don't know if the Paris Climate Accord is where necessarily our money needs to be going. So at the end of the day, this is really a China first or an India first policy. And it's just something that we need to be able to debate and talk about. And just because you're against it doesn't mean you're, you're against taking care of the environment. It just means maybe there's other better policies out there that we need to examine, better deals that we can be engaged in in taking care of our world. All right, number seven, speaking of our world, I'm just completely disturbed about what's going on in China right now. And this is why we need an administration who is strong on China. Excuse me, going to have some dear old coffee. Um, the BBC is reporting uh, the Uyghurs in China, the Muslim minority in the northern part of the country, that there is a brutal, brutal suppression of this minority uh, in China right now. And there's this re-education camps that are taking place. And why this isn't on the forefront of the international community to raise awareness to this reality, I'm not sure. But human rights groups say that the Chinese government has gradually stripped away the religious and other freedoms of the Uyghurs culminating in an oppressive system of mass surveillance, uh, detention, indoctrination, and even forced sterilization. And the most recent article from the BBC is also highlighting the, the mass rape that is going on as well. This policy flows from China's President Xi Jinping, who visited in 2014 this region in the wake of a terror attack by some of the Uyghur's separatists. Now, shortly after, according to documents that were leaked to the New York Times, um, he directed local officials to respond with absolutely no mercy. This is what you get in communist countries. This is what you get in socialist societies with these dictatorships. Absolutely no mercy. And that's what we're seeing. We're seeing something which is amounting to a genocide in China right now. And no one's ringing the alarm bells in the international community. Um, First-hand accounts from inside the internment camps are rare, but several former detainees and a guard have told the BBC they experienced or saw evidence of an organized system of mass rape, sexual abuse, and torture. Please uh, join me in praying right now for the Uyghurs in China and praying that someone in the international community will stand up uh, to the government, the Chinese government, and demand uh, human rights accountability in this aid, uh, this, this area. All right, last story. Um, it just broke out of uh, the Toledo Blade yesterday. Toledo City Council, uh, speaking of the local news here now, uh, instead of focusing on all that ails our city, like, hey, fixing our sidewalks, fixing the streets, and so on and so forth, is engaging in attacking free speech today as they want to limit the 40 Days for Your Life campaign for, by making it a misdemeanor to, quote, 
approach or follow another person within eight feet of them unless that person consents for the purpose of passing a leaflet or handbill to displaying a sign or engaging in oral protest education or counseling with them in the public way or sidewalk area. The eight foot buffer zone would apply to a hundred foot radius of the health care facility. So what am I talking about? So Toledo City Council wants to pass an ordinance which puts a buffer or a bubble around the local abortion facility where we go out to pray and offer help to moms in need and say, if a woman says no, uh, you know, when you first reach out to her, then there, then you could be guilty of $1,000 worth of fines, maybe a year in jail if you continue to try to reach out to her. Now, a couple things here on this. In the last six years, we've been running the 40 Days for Life campaign, 43 moms, now that we know about, that we reached out to in love, in peace, in kindness, have chosen life for their unborn children. And they're really happy that they said yes to life as they now have these beautiful little bundles of joy at home that bring in love and peace and happiness into their homes. Um, I was a part of one of those stories. Her name is Tamisha. Tamisha has been on my radio show. She's actually on my radio show, Say Yes to Life on Annunciation Radio, just the other day. And she shared uh, during the story, bringing up without my prompting, how when I first reached out to her, she didn't want to talk to me. And naturally so. I'm a crazy white guy standing on the corner. She's never seen me before. And I'm saying, hi, how you doing? Um, and she's about to go into the abortion facility, something which you know, for her is, is agonizing. And so she's going in and she's been told these things about these crazy people out on the sidewalk and so on and so forth. So naturally she's going to say, no, thank you. And continue into the building. Now, when she came back out, I said hello again for a second time. She said, um, no, thank you. And, you know, continue to walk towards her car. The Holy spirit was just imprinted so powerfully on my heart though, that I followed her over to the car. I knocked on the window and just said, hi, I'm really sorry. I just feel the Lord is calling me over here to talk to you. She rolled down the window. I offered to adopt her child. She said yes the next day. And then, um, you know, a couple weeks later, after she saw the ultrasound of her little baby, um, she decided to keep Amir Peter. And Amir Peter now is almost two years old, a thriving little boy. Now, according to this ordinance that the Toledo City Council is trying to pass, I could be fined. I could be in jail because I wanted to offer help and healing and hope to a woman in a crisis pregnancy. This is the type of attacks that are taking place in our country on free speech right now in America. And I know that a lot of us as Christians here in the country, we think ah, it's no big deal, whatever administration has been elected. Folks, we need to wake up. There's people being censored, whether that's on Twitter. Twitter. There's people being fired from their jobs simply because of their personal pro-life views. We've talked about in religious freedom, there's people up in Michigan who can't sell their goods in the local farmer's market simply because they put on their Facebook page that they believe marriage is between a man and a woman. And how dare you ever say, for example, that um, someone who is actually a biological male is actually a biological male or your Twitter account might be suspended. Christians, my brothers and sisters in the Lord, we need to wake up, wake up to the reality and the challenges that are, we're being faced today. And you know, at the end of the day, folks, we're called to love. So we preach the truth in love in mercy, forgiveness. We walk with, and we companion with everyone, whatever they might be struggling with, whether it's a crisis pregnancy or someone who has different views on LGBT issues, whatever it may be, we're there to be Christians, which means we're there to love. But as Christians, it also means we don't compromise. We live the faith to its fullness because we can't be pastoral at the end of the day if we're not standing for truth, if we're not standing for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And in the first pages of scriptures, we learn that, you know, God made us male and female. We learn that marriage is a sacred institution meant to give life. And we're all called to give life. But we fail to do that as a church. It's time now that we do. So I want to leave you with Psalm 27, which is one of my favorite psalms. It was my father's favorite psalm. And it starts with this. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid? My friends, I will continue to live and preach the Catholic faith. So you can find me. You can take me to jail. But you'll never take away from me my relationship with Jesus and his church. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Invite him today to be yours as well. We'll see you next week on The Catholic Citizen. This show and all media on Awaken Catholic is made possible by the Awaken Nation and the Hollow app. 
The Awaken Nation is a community of people like you who support all things Awaken for as cheap as a cup of coffee a week and get access to exclusive content. Learn more by visiting awakencatholic.org slash donate. Hollow is the only audio-guided Catholic prayer app focused on contemplative prayer and traditional Catholic meditation such as Lexio Divina, Daily Examine, and the Rosary. We here at Awaken all use Hollow every day and love it. To learn more or give it a try, visit hollow.app slash awaken.